For our high performance building design demonstration, we have this lobby. Some challenging design elements are the eastern facing windows and a waiting area under the mezzanine. Our initial design concept uses straight registers in three locations on the ceiling and two level, floor level returns. 10% makeup air from the outside will be controlled on the back side of the model and conditioned by the rooftop unit to, uh, to confirm its operating range. We are also considering a four-way diffuser for the ceiling. So we'll update the Revit model to see how this impacts the air quality in the lobby. Autodesk CFD provides a Revit launching tool. The CFD design study environment grows to consider multiple designs and environmental conditions. To get started, we'll look at a worst case summer condition with the HVAC unit operating at four air changes per hour. Now inside CFD, you can work with the part visibility just like in Revit. After hiding a few parts, you can see inside the room again. The first thing you will do is use the Revit family names to automatically assign material properties. Rules automation will save you time and ensure accuracy in the setup and can even be applied automatically during the launching process. It is important to point out that we are using moist air, which means in addition to temperature, pressure, and turbulence, we'll be tracking the relative humidity and each person will generate 70 watts. These details are important to conform to thermal comfort standards. This leaves one part left for setting up the model and that is the rooftop HVAC unit. You can set up the flow rate to be fixed or varied upon, upon a performance curve. A lot of thought has been given to the heat transfer control options and we settled upon eight. Empathy heat exchanger is a good choice for this model because it allows you to set the exit temperature and relative humidity, which means the program will report back how much water and heat is removed, helping you size the equipment with confidence. The flow direction for the heat exchanger is defined by selecting the inlets and outlet surfaces. That completes the material setup, and we are ready to define the outside makeup air with some boundary conditions. After the air is combined from the two low returns, you will need a flow rate of 102 CFM or 10% of what the HVAC unit on the roof is producing. Now you will need to define an ambient condition for the outside air to be pulled back into the model. For this summer case in the US, we used uh, 90F and 90% uh, relative humidity. The last step is to set up the solver for solar loading. This will include the solar radiation passed through the window and through the walls based on their construction. This lobby is located at the CFD development headquarters in Charlottesville, Virginia. And our test design day is the 4th of July, 9 a.m., clear and sunny. So the sun will be reflecting right on the floor, walls, and sofas. Accuracy is very important and CFD has the ability to adapt the solution detail in the areas needed. This means the solver has full control of delivering the accuracy you expect. This run takes about an hour, so we'll skip the solve and jump right into the results. Let's start by looking at temperature throughout this room and focus in on the waiting area and you will see a core body temperature of this person in the 80s and hot areas from the sun coming through the windows and a cold area, area in the center of the room from the vent that is probably causing too much draft on the sofa. We are just getting started and I'm already thinking that there's a better vent layout that would provide a more uniform environment in the, in the summer. Let's check in on the person up in the balcony and you will find that this person is noticeably cooler than the one downstairs. Since this is some basic performance data, Let's mark them for summary. Summary data is great for reviewing key data in areas of concern, but the power is really felt when used across multiple results. But we'll get to that later. Let's now jump back into the results and look at how the air is moving around the room. The ISO surface of temperature is great to identify microclimates quickly and visualize the thermal stratification. Planes cutting through that air helps focus your attention and the scale can be modified to make even the smallest gradient visible. Enough with temperature, let's switch to velocity 
and start to see how the airspeed is, and recirculation is working. Arrows, like you would expect, show direction. It can be confusing when looking at velocity and temperature with the same legend colors, but helps to use the options to differentiate. What is the environment like as you enter through the front door and walk to the waiting area? To investigate this, let's create a data acquisition line. Select a few points and you'll see a red line in the corresponding temperature data. But you're not stuck just looking at temperature. In fact, you can look at all the data solved for on this pull down. Velocity, relative humidity, draft rating, or ones I think you'll find the most useful. Thermal comfort is evaluated by a predicted mean vote rating between minus three and three, where minus one to one is the desired target. This simple rating takes into account everything and a great leading indicator. Here it is clear that the person downstairs is a bit on the hot side at four air, air changes per hour. The rooftop unit also provides great high level performance data that will confirm how much heat and moisture is being removed in this case. Remember, all the key results are stored in the decision center for easy review of your work. Over the last four minutes, we have saved three images showing temperature distribution, thermal stratification, and predicted mean vote. We save three summary parts and a plot of a, a path a person would take walking in the front door and moving to the seating area. Now that you understand one design point, it is time to expand the study to include six air changes per hour for the straight vents. And also consider a four-way diffuser at four and six air changes per hour. This is when you have to work less and have the opportunity to think about innovation and optimization. Cloning ensures reuse of all the shared settings and allows for changes as required. With three more runs that are about one hour each, you will have the option of solving them on your computer in a queue that would take about three hours or solve all three in one hour at using the Autodesk Cloud. With four sets of results to compare, the decision center is where you'll spend most of your time. The door to sofa plot clearly shows that the draft rating for the design two is, is above 20, which exceeds the recommended design limit. Ensuring air quality in the room is an art of compromises. You want to control the location and variations of different microclimates, lower energy costs, and ensure good air quality. Local mean age is like local air changes per hour and recommended to keep below 11 minutes to keep oxygen levels up and the air contaminant free. Most of us have experienced air quality fatigue when too many people are in a conference room with no ventilation for 15 or more minutes. The HVAC part summary clearly shows the correlation between occupant temperature and the performance of the HVAC unit based upon how efficiently the air is circulated in the room the HVAC unit will be required to remove more moisture and heat to reach the desired set point. While the numbers and graphs will lead you to a decision, it is seeing the flow that completes the story and leads to creative thinking. I don't think we have enough time to dig into all the details, but by cycling through the results, I'm sure there are areas of concern that are obvious to you when comparing temperature clouds, and looking at the red and blue areas when, when investigating predicted mean vote, temperature, and draft ratings. Let's now be more selective on what we're comparing. The viewports and thumbnail images allow for quick drag and drop to populate the storyboard you're interested in showing. Low traces can get busy quick, but they do display the flow along the walls very well. Trace density represents mixing and can show areas of trap flow that isn't getting recirculated. I'm still interested in understanding the flow pattern in the seating area a bit more. A great way to investigate this is to see traces and only show where they came from. This clearly shows a coil-like airflow underneath the mezzanine. By now, you're probably thinking there are better locations for our ceiling vents and that four air changes per hour in the lobby is achievable, but it's not gonna be easy. Before we wrap up, 
I do have one more thing to share. CFD can be used for fire safety smoke evacuation studies. You are seeing the effects of a couch fire and where the smoke collects over seven minutes. CFD will let you know how long the occupants have before they can no longer see the exit signs and evacuate the building safely.